Well, 2020 is almost finished. Hasn't it been a very strange year? And to close things out on CRG, what I want to do is show you a couple of recent pickups. We're going to have a look at a few donations as well. Then I want to pull out some of the system builds we've been working on this year and just update you on where things are. So in terms of pickups, I don't really have a lot to show you. The only system I've bought recently is this Panasonic FZ10 3DO. And I say recently, I actually bought this back in October. I am currently working through it. The motherboard is out of this at the minute. It's actually sitting behind us. It does work, but it is kind of rough. The lid is broken. That needs to be fixed. And unfortunately, it is missing the door for the AV expansion. The whole idea with this wee system actually was to see if we could buy something off eBay. This cost me £55. Then fix it up a bit and sell it on for a profit. So there will be a video coming shortly. I am nearly finished sorting this thing out. Just recapping the power supply. We're going to change the laser in here despite the fact it's working anyway. I just want to put a new one in it. And I need to try and find something to cover this AV expansion. That though brings me on to the other pickup, or should I say Christmas present. Because Santa delivered me a 3D printer. This is the FL Sun QQS Pro. And to be honest, I am still trying to get the grips with it, how it works. You can see a couple of wee bits and pieces there that I've printed out, including a Statue of Liberty at my son's request. I don't know why either, but he wanted it. So I'm just trying to get my head around it, trying to fine tune the settings of it. And then maybe we could use this to make ourselves a cover for that AV expansion on the 3DO. And the only other thing I got was a new keyboard and mouse. And the only reason I want to show you it is because it's a mechanical keyboard and uh, it was only about £40 from Amazon. So yes, I highly doubt there are cherry switches in here. And it's from some company called Havit. Never really heard of them. But we did buy one of these keyboards last year for my son, for his computer. And it's held up really well. I needed a new keyboard out here and I just thought I'd get myself one as well. Nice clicky keys. The switches themselves, I'm not actually sure what they are. But if anyone recognizes that type of switch, maybe you could let me know. It does have independent LED lights, RGB on every key, as you can see. And that's the way my son likes it, albeit that would give me a headache. I just like keeping it on one static color. I do like actually how if you press a key, the LED turns off and then fades back in again. Just a nice little feature. Be interesting to see how it uh, sticks the test of time. The mouse that comes with it is okay. It's uh, very plasticky and doesn't really feel the best, but you can't really complain for about 40 pounds all in. Right, anyway, let's get to the important bit, the donations. And the first thing I want to show you is three more expansion cards. These came courtesy of Surge. Now that's a guy that also donated the Gravis Ultrasound to us. That's currently installed in the 46 rig. You might have seen a video on that a couple of weeks ago. Thank you very, very much again, Serge, for your kindness in donating these expansion cards to us. I am absolutely blown away by your generosity. The first card here, this is the NVIDIA GeForce DDR. The original GeForce, this was a really, really big deal back in the day because this was the first card to introduce hardware, transformation and lighting. Doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it was a massive thing back then and gave a massive speed boost to 3D acceleration in games. In fact, I remember one of my friends back in tech who owned this card. 
The day he got it, we all piled into his little car, flew around to his house and installed this in his machine. First game we tried to run was Soldier of Fortune at maxed out settings and it ran absolutely beautifully on this GeForce DDR. Now unfortunately this card is missing the cooler. Well, I say missing, it is here, but it was loose, not attached to the board. So hopefully this does still work. I'll get a new cooler on here and we can build a system around it. I'm not going to test this card today. I want to wait and get a new cooler. This one I think is done. The fan isn't spinning freely. So I dare say this is toast. But hopefully the card itself still works. So if a Gravis ultrasound was not enough in terms of awesome sound cards, he also sent us this Sound Blaster AWE 64 Gold. What an absolutely beautiful sound card. And I have been busting to try this out. So I think what we'll do is dig out one of our old systems that we put together earlier in the year, install this and see what it sounds like. But just before then, this is the other card he sent us and probably out of all of them to be honest this is the one I'm most excited to get into and take a look at. This is a Matrox Mystique and you'll remember that I built a system around the Mystique back in September. But what's so special about this one? Well this thing sitting on top of it is the Rainbow Runner. So this is a video capture card effectively sitting on top of our mistake and this is the lead for it. It gives us S video in, S video out, composite video out, composite video in. I always wanted a Rainbow Runner back in the day when I had my mistake installed in my old Packard Bell. I am so grateful to finally have one of these. Um, I want to do a bit more research on this, do a bit of testing with it, and then I will be pulling together a video in the future to show off what we can do with the mistake, and basically just to take a look at what video capturing was like back in 1996. So just before we do crack on and test this uh, 64 gold, there is one other donation that I want to show you which comes courtesy of Shane. And this awesome little card is an optical disc emulator or ODE for the Sega Saturn. Again, we'll not be testing this today as I need to get some images downloaded and an SD card in here for it. Plus I also want to use our 3D printer to build a housing for this so we can mount it within the Saturn. But just wanted to say thank you very much to Shane for his kindness in donating this. Just wanted to say as well that the build quality of this is very impressive. The PCB is quite thick. In fact, even if we compared it to a retail product such as our GeForce DDR, the PCB is slightly thicker on this and it just gives it a really nice uh, build quality. It just gives it a nice feel. It feels like a really solid bit of kit. So I am super excited to try this out. Optical disc emulation. I suppose it is the future for all our old CD based systems. All those lasers will die out eventually. But the one thing I really want to test today is this Sound Blaster. And for that, I thought what we'd do is dig out this whole system. Remember this, the Digipos point of seal. We did fit an ISA sound card in here at the time, but it wasn't a particularly good one. I think our Sound Blaster 64 Gold will just sit in there rather nicely. So for those that don't remember, or maybe haven't seen the original video, this little system is based around the AMD K62 Plus, 
It's a 533 megahertz chip in here, albeit when we first got this machine, it was only clocked at 450 megahertz. I've pushed that out to 560, which is about as fast as I can get this stable. And then to help out with the video, we also fitted an ATI Radeon 7000. And if you remember last time, with a little bit of tweaking, we were able to run 3D Mark and get a score of 895. Well, since then, I've been doing a bit more tweaking. In particular, I installed this Rage 3D Tweak software. And we've overclocked the card slightly to 180 megahertz on core and memory clocks. That's up from 148.5 on both. So quite a bit faster. And with that, if we run the benchmark, you can see our score is up to just over a thousand 3D marks. 1037 so another decent boost in performance and to be honest i think it's about as good as we can get out of the little ati 7000 gpu that's in there the big limiting factor of that graphics card is that it only has a 64-bit memory bus so the wii system i think is being hampered quite badly by that graphics card we have in there it is limited to PCI only, and yes, I still would like to get a Voodoo to put in there. I think that would be an awesome pairing for that K62 Plus processor, but for now, it is what it is. And let's install the Sound Blaster AWE64 Gold. So let's get this Aztec card out. And let's get our Sound Blaster in. Oh no, it's not going to fit. The big uh, heat sinks in the way. What about up here? Would it fit in here? No, it's not. It's going to hit the fan. Oh no. I really wanted to put it in this machine, but um, that's not going to happen. What am I going to do? Well, I suppose for starters, this card has to go back in. And then I'm going to need to think of some other machine that we can put that into. What about our 1996 build, actually? The Pentium 200 system with the Matrox Mystique in it. I suppose we should really put it in that. And that might actually give us a good opportunity as well to test out the other Mystique graphics card that Surge sent us. We could stick that in and at least try to install the drivers for the Rainbow Runner. This old thing then. I really don't like this case. The more I use this machine, the more I've convinced myself that I need to change this case. It is horrible. But It'll do for now, until I can get something better. So I've already uninstalled all the Sound Blaster Live stuff. Let's just get that card out of there. Our AWE 64 Gold. There's a nice slot in there for it. And we can hook up the CD audio again. And then our mistake, we may as well change this over while we're here. So one thing I was actually wondering is when we fit the other card, are we going to lose two megabytes of our RAM? Because this Mistake has 2 meg on board and then that 2 meg expansion to give us 4 meg. But I went ahead and removed the Rainbow Runner from this. There it is there. And there is no memory on that. But this Mistake is actually a later version of the card that has 4 meg of RAM on board. 
So if I'm right, this is a Mystique 220. It also runs at a slightly higher clock speed than this one. So this card will go in the machine, and then this one will go up on the wall for display. Need to fit this again. And there is quite a bit to line up to fit it. Just like that. That's interesting, isn't it? You notice that connector in there. It doesn't quite encapsulate all of the pins sticking up off the mistake. Strange. I'm sure it probably does make connection, but you wonder why they used a shorter connector on there compared to all the rest of them. So even with the Rainbow Runner in place, it still only takes a single slot. And that card that's sitting in below it, that's another addition to this system. Since you last seen it, that's a Voodoo 1. I don't have a pass-through cable though. So all I was doing in the meantime was hooking both of them up to my KVM switch and just changing over that way. Right, are we going to get a display? Is that graphics card going to work? Let's find out. Helps if I plug in the VGA connector. Yep, graphics card's working nicely. Let's get into Windows and get some drivers installed. So I have this computer now just hooked up to the main PC's capture card. Uh, if you remember when we first built this machine, the Mystique outputs when playing games had a really funny resolution and frequency and most LCD monitors will not sync to it. Luckily enough, the capture card will. I've since figured out a means of hooking up the output of this to the capture card. So that's what we're using today. All the drivers are installed for the Mystique and for the sound card. And speaking of which, let's just jump in and hear what it sounds like. I might go to game for such things. Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Let's just run the setup quickly. Sound Blaster 16. That's what we'll use for sound effects. And this game does support the AWE32. That's also supported by the 64 Gold that we have in here. So let's pick that. And let's hear what it sounds like. Well, it sounds pretty good to me. So we're back on this monitor now. And that's because I want to take a quick look at one of the features of the Rainbow Runner. Just to test that it's working. This is the software here that comes with it. Our PC VCR remote. And from what I can tell, you would use this for your video capturing. But it also seems to do pass through because it's currently looking for a signal on S video, but the output of the S video is also attached to the capture card and it is syncing to something here. For example, if I turn that off, you can see no signal. So I think that will be pretty cool to have a play with at some point in the future. But one other thing it can do that we can test very quickly and easily now, since we have it hooked up to the capture card, we can enable TV out. And all we have to do is click this button here and apply. It does put our monitor out of range. But over on the capture card, 
we have our TV out. And I have to say, it looks pretty good. It's not just as sharp as VGA, but the quality is, well, I am impressed. Typical Matrix. Their image quality always was very good. Can we open an MS-DOS prompt? Well, that's interesting. If we try to do that, it seems to have turned our TV out off. And then if we exit, it's back on again. What about running a game? How about Transport Tycoon again? Can we try it? Yeah, that's working through the TV out as well. And it's almost working better than my direct capture of it earlier. So there you are. If you have your retro computer with a Matrox Mystique and Rainbow Runner, there's no reason why you couldn't just hook your computer up to a TV and enjoy your games that way. I will be coming back to this system at some point in the future. I just want to completely rebuild it from the ground up. Might even go for a better motherboard because I am having some significant stability issues with this system and that rather poor PC chips motherboard in there probably isn't helping much. So the other system I want to update is on quickly is the 486 build. This is the one with the ultrasound in there. And you'll remember from the video in which we fitted that card, I was having a few problems getting it playing nicely with the Sound Blaster clone. I've since got that sorted, more or less. And let me show you what I mean. So if we just go in here and play a MIDI file, Anyone in particular, doesn't really matter. And that's obviously using the ultrasound. So we can come out of that. And if we change over to the directory for the Sound Blaster clone, we have this organ program there. And as you can hear, silence. But what I figured out is that it's not a resource conflict. The Sound Blaster clone is still working. But the way I have it wired up is the output of it goes in through the line in of the ultrasound and then out to the speakers. And for whatever reason that I can't get my head around, once you use the ultrasound, Despite it saying here that the line input is enabled, it is actually muted. So what we need to do is run Ultramix, L for line, E and E to enable both left and right channels. And then if we go back to that AP organ program, you can hear, hopefully, that is working fine. Equally, if we go back to the ultrasound directory and play another MIDI file, there you are, you see, it's working again fine. But if we were to go back and try and use the Sound Blaster card, it will be muted again. You'll have to run that Ultramix command to unmute it. So that is the last hurdle with that machine. 
Anyone, any ideas why it's doing that? It is driving me nuts. To be honest with you, the only way around it, I can think, is just to write a large batch file to run all the various commands that we need before loading any particular game. We can set the line in, muted or enabled. We could load Mega EM to emulate the MT32 or whatever. I think that's probably the best thing to do. But if anyone maybe knows why Ultra Mix keeps muting that line in, please let me know. It would certainly make life a lot easier if I could just keep that enabled all the time. Well, that is pretty much it for 2020 for me. Just want to thank everyone who has watched the channel this year. It has been quite the year for CRG. We started off with only a couple of hundred subscribers and now are knocking on the door of 2000. That is absolutely mind boggling. Also, massive thank you to everyone who has donated stuff this year. Don't really know what else to say about that. Very out of the blue. I was not expecting any of it. But um, thank you so much for your generosity. Well, that's it. The demo's finished. Let's draw a line under it. 2020 is over. Happy New Year, everyone. And I will see you in 2021.